In this video, let's learn about what compound interest is and compare it to what we already know about simple interest. So let's get straight to it. So if you haven't already watched our lesson on simple interest, we encourage you to go ahead and watch that video first before moving on with this one, since it will help you understand the context of what we're teaching here. Otherwise, let's get right into it. Let's start off this lesson with an example of simple interest first, and then of compound interest so we can compare the two. Let's say Carol invests into a simple interest that makes 10% of a $1,000 investment every year for three years. To calculate how much she actually makes in simple interest alone, we can just pull up our formula here and plug in the following values into their respective variables. So I is equal to 1,000 times 0 0.10 times three, and if we simplify this, we get I is equal to 300. Good. Therefore, Carol makes a total of $300 in profit after three years of simple interest. This equates to $100 being made per year for three years. So remember, there was no so-called stacking effect in simple interest. Every year, Carol made the exact same amount in interest. Now, let's say that John invested into a similar kind of deal only that instead of it being a simple interest, he invests into a compounded interest. What this means is that after every year of making interest, the next year will make interest off of not just the principal amount, but from the total amount including the interest that has been earned from each year. So while both Carol and John would make 10% of $1,000 in the first year, which of course is $100, the second year is when the difference will begin. Carol will make 10% of $1,000 again, but for John, who signed up for compound interest, the 10% he makes in the second year will be off of $1,100, not $1,000. This makes his second year yield more returns than Carol's second year, since 10% of $1,100, which is $110, is obviously bigger than 10% of $1,000, which is $100. You can imagine this difference getting bigger and bigger when the third year comes along, since Carol would, once again, be making 10% of $1,000, which is $100, while John would be making 10% of $1,210 this time, which would be $121. As we can see, there's already a big difference. All right, so now that we understand the concept of compound interest, let's take a look at the actual formula for compound interest. So here's the formula, where the A is the amount of value that an investment or loan carries with a compound interest, P is the principal amount, I is the interest rate compounded, and N is the number of terms. What we mean by number of terms is the number of times the interest rate needs to be compounded. For example, if it's compounded annually for two years, then our n would be equal to two. Similarly, if it's compounded annually for three years, then our n would be equal to three. However, if it's compounded monthly for two years, then we would have to do two times 12 to get an n of 24 since it's compounded every month in this example instead of every year. Great, so let's go ahead now and try some examples together. If an investment of $3,500 was made as the principal amount at an interest rate of 3%, compounded quarterly for two years, what would be the total amount of the investment at the end of the second year? Well, all we need to do is pull up our formula and plug in our values. So the principal amount is 3,500. The interest rate is 3%, which we plug in as 0.03 since it's a percentage. Now, our interest rate is being compounded quarterly for two years. So what value would we have to plug in for our N here? Well, since it's being compounded quarterly, and there are four quarters in a year, 
To represent two years, we would plug in four times two as our n. Therefore, this would be our equation, and simplifying this gets us 1.03 in the brackets here to the exponent of four times two, which is eight. Computing this gives roughly 1.267 and multiplying that by 3,500 gives a final value of roughly $4,434.50. Awesome! So this is the value of what the investment will be worth at the end of two years with this compound interest. Great! Now, before we finish this lesson, I do want to note that some formulas will write n times t like so. To avoid any confusion, the n in this case would just represent the number of times per year, while the t would represent the number of years. So in our last example, our n would be 4, while our t would be 2. The way we've taught it in this video, however, is to just treat the n itself as the total number of terms altogether. Good! Well, that's the end of this lesson, and now that we've learned some more about compound interest, we strongly encourage you to try some more questions to get better practice. So until next time, have a good one!